Oh, son. Come in close. Don't let, don't let nobody see this video. This is uber top secret. You know how we're on this online and you can get all your friends through these parasocial relationships. You can go to watch porn and get, get your little woman fix online. And you know how you're like underachieving in real life with money and finances. And you're like, oh, I don't know what I can do. Then the, your favorite self-improvement YouTuber pops up and he tells you, hey dog, do you know what a digital nomad is? Have you read the four hour work week? All that shit that you experience and you like a lot. Third, that's only 50%. If you, if you go to the door in front of your house, which you don't really use that often, but if you open that door and you go outside, there's a whole world out there where millions of people make their dreams come true and they don't need to be a digital nomad. And one more thing. Before we go, one more super top secret. Don't let nobody know this. You know, like all those those uh, structures that people live in and call homes or those structures that house businesses inside of them or the roads that people drive on or the cars that people use to get to point A to point B or all, all that shit. There's guys who make millions of dollars doing each one of those things in a house a contractor can subcontract out over 20 tasks and each one of those people in each home that are subcontracted each task then they could they're most likely millionaires because they run a whole crew of people doing them all over in each individual town spread all the way across the country oh son tell me you've been nomad pilled without telling me you've been nomad pilled i was a little sarcastic with that other 50 percent of life and everything like that because people are so tied up in this internet shit nowadays but today we're talking about the other 50 percent and how to break away from the nomad pill that all these self-improvement gurus have told you and sold you on saying that oh you can go fuck hoes in thailand and you can go live in the bahamas and sort fight with dolphins or whatever the fuck they say that you can do let me tell you first off not everybody is anakin skywalker they sell all these young impressionable men you see thousands of fucking videos flood your youtube suggestion of some indian kid with the personality of a fucking wet sponge being like oh you don't need to beat your meat and you need to be on no fap. You don't need to do this. You need to do that. They give you this fucking bullshit and it's just, it's the same regurgitated message over and over with less impact each time. And it's really crazy. All these self-improvement gurus have sparked all these kids, which I feel is a good thing to chase your dreams, but they've sold them how to chase it. And they don't tell you that chasing your dreams is the hardest fucking thing you can do in life. I work construction on roofs, hard ass shit all fucking day in the hot summer sun, and it doesn't come close to trying to chase your fucking dreams. That shit is the biggest head game it's the hardest shit I could ever imagine, is trying to chase your dreams. It's constantly a mind game, and they don't tell them that chasing your dreams and the dream that you're going to make real and your purpose or your passion, you have to choose that yourself. It's not going to be given to you, like be a YouTuber, fucking start an online agency, like all these people think they can do. So what, is it, what does it cause? It's caused thousands of young, impressionable men looking for meaning in life and searching for guidance because of whatever fucking circumstance at home with them, and now they're out looking for this next fucking role model. And, I want to say one thing before we really get in the meat and potatoes of this video. I saw a clip from Destiny, the little blue-haired fuck guy, on YouTube like eight months ago. I used to watch his shit and then sneak off real deep into the online shit. I've separated myself greatly. I barely get on fucking phone. I only make these videos and most of my entertainment comes from either a book or a movie, something like that. <laughs> but I saw him make a comment being like, do we really need another Andrew Tate? This whole video is not a gripe with online gurus. I actually find on online gurus to be incredibly helpful. We live in the era of information. You have more knowledge than the richest, most successful person in the 90s. So utilize it. And we all have different dreams and goals, whatever. Not everyone wants to be a digital nomad, but these are the people that I'm talking to have been sold this dream. And all these people, besides the digital nomad, just talking about chasing your dreams in, in general, in the past... 
Warren Buffett didn't have a Warren Buffett to look up to. We all have that now. Anything you want to do in life, there's some sort of a master that has done it that is most likely sharing his wisdom and guidance online with you. Say with like an Alex Hermosi, a Hamza, any, an Andrew Tate, you don't like the way this fucking guy looks. You don't like the way his verbiage is and the way he comes across with his, with his language. You switch to this guy and this guy can give you the same, some similar advice that will help you get accomplish your dreams and your goals. That's a little tangent, but I have to lay those ground rules. I don't have a lot against these people. I have a problem with this digital nomad thing, pushing young men away from being useful, going outside, being in the real fucking world. They all want to be online and be some digital nomad and think that it's going to solve all their fucking problems. When in reality, most of these fucking kids, a lot of their problems take a lot of self-reflection, making a couple YouTube videos, fucking buying an LLC for $300 online and thinking that you're fucking going to be Mr. Swag or something like that ain't going to fix them problems. I want to go back on one point I made. You may not be Anakin Skywalker. You may not be force sensitive, special fucking snowflake. You may not, this may not be you, but you don't have to, that does not mean you're doing what Andrew Tate says when he's like, someone's got to flip the burgers. Yes, there are dumb fucking idiots out there who don't have self-awareness or any sort of initiative in life but just because he says someone's got to flip the burgers and all this shit that doesn't mean that if you don't become fucking some online millionaire that you're fucked they sell you this message that oh online's the fastest growing thing whenever it comes to entrepreneurship online online ai ai crypto crypto all this shit in your face and they forget about the other 50 percent we still have to have buildings made to house a fucking computer. A computer doesn't work without electricity and electrician wiring fucking power to the house. It doesn't work without technicians servicing the service lines, c connecting that power from city to city. It does not work without these tradesmen and these blue collar workers. And people shit so much on blue collar workers like they're fucking idiots. And... I've worked with tons of blue collar workers who are fucking millionaires. They took this knowledge and information that they learned from these online gurus and apply it to a real world business. It's a little bit harder. You're going to have hard work, but do you really want to be like some soy boy Tim Ferriss motherfucker sitting and he's like, uh, he doesn't even look like he's that much of a man. It's like, do you really, you do not become fulfilled through working four hours a day telling men online, do not beat your meat. You don't become fulfilled that way. You become fulfilled through hard work. That's why a lot of these crypto bros and shit like that nowadays are starting YouTube channels and pumping out content. Because, yeah, you made a million dollars and it's fun because you can sit on a beach and you have all this free time. But then you slowly realize there ain't fucking much fulfillment to that. So, what do they do? They start looking for things that are hard work and they can put passion into. And I promise you... If you're a very hands-on person, if you're a very perfectionist type person, an artistic person even, I like to do oil paints and make music, and I still fucking love doing woodworking and carpentry and roofing and all this shit because there's a creative element to it. It takes problem-solving skills. A lot of young men are so, are so against hard work nowadays, not just because uh, they can't push themselves, it's because they're stupid. They've been indoctrinated by a cell phone and Google in a fucking calculator in school doing their math problems where they don't have to do critical thinking. Anytime I'm on a job and I hire on a kid or some guys come on there, they're, they start out at the bottom. They start out picking up trash, plugging in fucking extension cords and shit like that. They don't even get to run a saw. And you test them out. You see if they're like the fucking sheep, like the herd of other people that... They'll, they'll constantly be asking you, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? I saw that shit whenever I worked at Subway like two years ago when I was a fucking loser. I saw people that would just stand around on their phone and the boss would be like, can you stay busy? I get it was a shitty dead end job, but they would just act like an idiot instead of just grabbing a broom and acting like they were sweeping at least. They would get in trouble constantly because they didn't know how to just like critically think. They'd be like, well, what am I supposed to do? There's no customers. Find something to do. And half of these people in these jobs I work, Work, that are younger my age they can't even find something to do they they work they don't learn even they take three years to they work a job for a whole fucking year and the whole time the boss has to continually tell them what to do instead of them eventually learning to do the shit on their own but that's a different tangent it just there's lots of things that push young men away from hard work 
And it all comes down to me. Do I want to be, do I relate myself or do you relate yourself more with like the little pretty boy influencer that goes to the gym for two, eight, for two hours a day? He's got a decent body because he's on steroids, but he goes to the gym as hard as shit he does in the day is two hours at the fucking gym. And then he comes home, gets to smoke weed or fuck around, watch Netflix, whatever he does, work on his business, make some fucking videos online, and that's all he does. Or do you respect someone more like David Goggins, who pushes himself to the fucking limits? He does all this shit. Or a millionaire carpent, or a millionaire general contractor, who runs crews of 300 people and shit like that. Like, my mentor, it's just a one-on-one -on -one thing. This motherfucker has ran crews of 300 people on 22 plus million dollar houses and made a shit ton of fucking money. And I get to learn everything one on one. And it's really just crazy how more fulfilling that other half of life is compared to this online shit. I only make these videos, you could say, well Cameron, you're a hypocrite because you make these videos online. I make these videos online not to make a fucking money, a bunch of money. I started this off with the idea of like, oh, if I can rip off a bunch of fucking incels with some online course, that'd be cool. But then I realized how important these are. These are like a therapy session for me. As well as I get to, I get to, I get to put every single idea and realization that comes into my head into words. Go back and review it. So I would say making videos or even if you tweet out your ideas like Alex Hermosi or you write it down in a journal, but constantly, uh, constantly writing down or documenting your ideas. It helps me as well as the whole theory. The other reason why I do it is there's a, in this book, it says men need a mentor, a brotherhood and a mentee. Mentor is someone above them teaching them some sort of skill. Brotherhood is people on their level that they can do the things with and not feel lonely. Mentee is someone that you teach who is below you. You don't have to be a genius and a subject to teach someone your knowledge. And all that does is it concretes your fucking understanding and realizations into your head more by teaching someone else. If I picked up a guitar and learned five chords and taught someone else those same five chords, I would get ten times better at playing those five chords. That's just how this shit works. Another little side tangent but I had to drop this gem in there for you boys. Another thing, traveling is fucking overrated. Whenever they're preaching to you to start this fucking millionaire, this millionaire empire or whatever, you want to be like Elon Musk, Steve Jobs, one of the great innovators of our time. If you want to be like these people, I promise you traveling, fucking uh, going fencing, making $2 million off some crypto shit online and going and living in fucking Brazil, fucking bitches with BBLs, is not going to make you feel happy. It's not going to push you towards being an innovator, some Genghis Khan mother the fucker like all these people want to be because their ego is so big it's not going to push you towards that every time you travel all you're doing is oh i got to see the fucking roman Colosseum. oh i got to see the mona lisa in person it's so crazy you look at the mona lisa from this angle it looks different than the picture online whoop de doo you eat at a couple restaurants and you come back broker than you fucking left traveling's cool don't get me wrong i ain't gonna shit on it i'd start a war in the comments if i did that but it really just halts and stagnates your progress. You can get some inspiration or learn about the culture or whatever you want to say, but it can stagnate your progress greatly. I've been talking a lot about fulfillment and how you can still feel fulfilled. And you're like, well, what is making me feel fulfilled from that? I see all these people and I compare myself to them online, all these YouTube millionaire motherfuckers, and I want to be just like them. Well, you're just like the rest of the herd that want to do the same fucking thing. You're no different. Yeah, you think you're going to innovate on some YouTube or some crypto and find a way to break through the mold. Good luck, dog. I hope you achieve it. But if you want some certainty of fulfillment in life and some things and break through all the competition because the fucking people have become so weak nowadays. They don't want to do hard work because they don't value it. They don't understand the importance of being a man and doing hard work. Go and do some real life shit. Step away from the fucking computer and go experience the other 50%. It will make you feel more fulfilled because whenever you're making real money in the real world, you're not regurgitating information for content online. You're not selling some fucking, you're not scamming over some little kid who bought a hundred dollars in crypto and then it comes up to its turn point and everyone sells out and that kid loses out on a fucking hundred dollars that's not what you're doing in real life to make money you can be a scumbag and be a shitty person but mainly you are providing value and being useful for someone with some sort of a product or service and providing them value making their life better and they make your life better by giving you some sort of money for it that's the exchange of currency online 
it's like 50% fucking people all trying to snake each other and climb their way to the top and claw their way to the top, really. And the other 50% is all right. But in real life, it's more like 70-30. Because in real life, most people are afraid of getting fucking punched in the face. You fuck somebody over in real life, they're going to punch you in the fucking face. Maybe not as likely in like a city, but where I live, if you fuck somebody over in a bar, there ain't gonna be no fucking assault charges. They're gonna punch you in the fucking face. That's just how it is. Online, you don't have those repercussions, so there's more bullshit snakes and scam artists. In real life, it's a little bit more rare. Still there, but a little bit more rare. So this video has been going on for long enough, and the topic is simple enough that it doesn't need to be a 30-minute thing. So to summarize it all, I get it, dog. I've been digital nomad pilled in the past, or I think that nothing's gonna make me happy besides being a fucking YouTube millionaire with all this clout and shit like that. And at the end of the day, it's just fucking a endless pursuit for money. You're not even doing it for fucking other, you're not even doing it for other things in life that will make you happy and feel fulfilled and shit like that. It's just all greed for money and materialism, which at the end of the day will not make you happy. You gotta be happy first, and then get your goddamn money up. Silence the desperation and anxiety from comparing yourself to all these people online who are the Anakin Skywalkers and have got extremely lucky and have all their dreams laid out for everyone to view and compare their lives against. And separate yourself from online. Go outside, touch grass, get a skill, contribute to society, and go outside and put the fucking phone down and learn how to... And learn how to have not even a balance, but use it a lot less. Because a balance is 50-50. I do not believe you should use this 50-50. This is a tool. This is your tool. This is like a hammer. You don't use a hammer in every single situation when building a house. Sometimes you use pliers. Sometimes you use a nail gun. Sometimes you don't use this all the time. This is your tool. You don't need to use this all the time. You use this fucking all the time and you're going to be sucked in because it's the most powerful tool that's been made in the last fucking 20 years. Son of a bitch is crazy and will suck you in. You have everything on this phone, like I said, my little whisper thing in the beginning. Men have parasocial relationships with streamers and their content creators who feed them and make them feel like they have friends. They have pornography, which feeds them and makes them feel like they're getting their little sense of enjoyment with women when they and don't have to go outside and actually talk to them. They get mental masturbation from all these self-help gurus pre preaching this digital nomad shit, and it makes them feel like they're actually doing something useful for their life instead of, and then they'll wake up five years later and realize they never did it and they don't have any real world skills. So just do those three things and I promise you will be all right. And there is there is somewhat of a balance with this. I mean, if you could find a way, to, like I see a lot of tradesmen, I've seen them on TikTok where they got like their tradesmen and they got their own little business and then they also make videos of it and you're kind of meshing the two and that's perfect. That, that works very good because I do believe this needs to be utilized. That's why I make these videos. But you should not be entirely dependent on the internet. Even Andrew Tate, who preaches this digital nomad shit, has a real world skill. I mean, he literally preaches that half of his money is in the real world. And he makes money from businesses that are besides the internet. So, try to find something like that. Try to find some balance, old son. Chase your dreams. Don't let me push you off from your dreams. If you want to be a YouTuber, be a YouTuber. But you need to be realistic and not be autistic. Be realistic, don't be autistic, and always be self-aware of your actions and what you're doing. Chase paper and enjoy nature, old son. Have a great fucking day.